This is one of the best smart blind motors I've come across so far. Just a tube with a battery hidden in there, fits in your existing blind, works via remote, and can work via an app for remote connectivity. You can link it up with a smart light switch. So if you press the button, you can control it directly from the switch to get it closing and opening again. Also, it's a very clean finish, so nothing dangling at the sides to open and close it. It's an excellent functionality from this. Hi guys, they were taking a look at a blind motor. So this particular one is from Zemi Smart. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So there's two variants of this product. You can get a Wi-Fi based version and that connects directly to your Wi-Fi router and a Zigbee based one. The key difference between the two is the Zigbee based one will require a hub. So I've got a hub over here. And one of the advantages of the Zigbee based one is the fact it has a longer range on there and it's not constantly communicating to their servers over the internet. So I'll be setting this Zigbee based one up and showing the functionality you get with it. So let's begin by showing what you get in the packaging. You get a remote control. This comes with a mount on there. You've got a sticky pad on the back. You get some fixtures as well if you want to screw that onto a wall. You get a remote glass finish on there, plastic glossy design on the back. You've got a button point here for programming it. Only three buttons on here and an LED indicator just up there. You get an instruction manual showing how to set up the Zigbee based side of things and a manual showing how to set up the remote with this. You get some metal brackets to replace your existing blind brackets. You get a Zigbee based dongle here and this is the device that communicates with the blind motor and it runs on a radio frequency to communicate with the motor. You get some fixtures for the blind. So first of all, the other end of the blind can have this fitted on there and this is the attachment for that. So it just goes around in there. And these attachments attach onto the blind motor, allowing it to have a snug finish on your blind. Now the blind motor has a length of 34.7 centimeters, strong build quality on there. You've got plastic either end on there. This is the side which will be going on the bracket. You've got the notches on here and taking one of the brackets, it just literally just sits into position, tightly locking it in place. Looking closer, you can see a micro USB connection point here, and that's for charging the device. And there's a small button here to help in programming it. You'll need to use the adapters when you're installing this to grip onto the inside of the tube. To get the adapter on, it's just a matter of taking that screw off, placing that in position and tightening the screw up again. This is the blind I'll be replacing in my studio and I've had an existing motor on here anyway. Doesn't look great, obviously that hanging off the end, hence this sort of product would be ideal for my situation where it'd be nice and clean, nothing visible either side of this. With the blind removed, you've got an end cap here. It does have an adapter on there, so in theory this should fit this. They say it should fit into blinds up to two and a half centimeters. So you can see that that should fit in if I push it in. But before I do that, just to show the diameter on here, you've got two and a half centimeters. Now for this to work, we're gonna to have to take this adapter, fit it onto the blind motor, and it should grip into the area quite firmly. So you can see at the moment, if I try putting it in, it's quite a tight squeeze. So if you do struggle on your one, you can slice a little bit off, maybe sand it down or cut it off carefully with a knife or a chisel. So the first stage would be, let's get this attached onto the blind motor. With the screw removed, if I pull it off, you can see the shape of this. Now, before we put the adapter on, first thing we need to do is put on this piece. And this piece is like an edge piece that slots onto here. So it gives it a nice flush finish with the blind. If I put it in position, you can see it just fits snugly in. Now taking this end, if I place it on, and there we have it, it doesn't move unless the motor had control of it. And we'll put the screw back on. And there we have it, it's in position. Now the end with the pull cord, let's pull that off and I'm gonna slot it in on that end. So let's see if it will fit in. So first of all, there's a slight notch in there and the notch here, if I place it in position, slowly wiggle it. Ah, yes, it's going in quite a snug fit on there. And then with this, see the end cap, and there we have it, that's gone in. So really pleased. Other ends in, I just used my pliers and just gently tapped it in and just went in. A little bit of plastic on the edges came off the fixture, but it's gone in really well. I've installed the blind and nice and clean, as you can see, coming over to the side where the motor is. 
a little tip for you as you're installing it, sort of decide what angle to put it at. I think it's best just to have it pointing straight down so you can plug a cable in to charge it up directly. And you've got the configuration pinpoint just over here too. Let's make a start at setting this up. So coming over to my Android phone, going into the Play Store, the app we're after is Smart Life. The other one you could use is Tuya. Both are identical in functionality. I'm using Smart Life throughout my home. So we're gonna use that one. If you haven't got it installed, obviously install it, register an account. And then if I open it up, this is what you're initially presented with. You can see I've got a number of devices in my home. And now if I go over to the location where my Zigbee hub is, going in there, you can see the other Zigbee devices I have. Now to get this device added in, if I I go to add sub device and it's indicating that the device has to be in a blinking mode. So if I take the dongle that comes with it, plug it in. And now if I hold on to the button here, just for a moment, there you go, it's blinking rapidly now. So next, if I click LED already blink, give it a moment, there you go, it's found it. We'll add it in the studio room and done to that. Now coming out of this, going to all devices, that's how the device is shown and going in there, that's the interface you have on there. So now we need to pair up the blind with the app. Coming over to my blind now, as I've mentioned already, there's a programming point over here. So if I hold on to that for three seconds, it should move. There you go. And now on the app, if I hold on to this, there you go, as simple as that to pair up with the app. Let's test out the motor. So if I push up button, it comes down. And if I press the down button, it goes up. So working the wrong way around. First thing we need to do then is click more and motor direction. Let's change to forward, confirm to that. Back again, let's test it out now. Pressing down. It's good, that works. And pressing up. That's working correctly as well. So let me pause it. Now let's set upper and lower limits on here. So if I go to more, limit set, upper limit setting, and let's take it to the top limit first of all. So we press the up button. Get it into position. And now let's press upper limit setting. Okay, that's perfect, confirm to that. Coming back, go to lower limit setting. Let's go all the way down. And I've paused at the lower limit. So let's click lower limit setting. That's set, confirm to that. And now if I come back and just click up, pause it and then go down. Perfect, the lower limit set. Let's let it go all the way to the top. There you go, perfect. Let's get the remote added. So in the app, you click more, add remoter, and then you just hold on to the up button. There you go, that's paired up now. So if I now click down, it'll open that way. And click the up goes in a reverse direction. So it's working to the limits we've set in the app. And there you go, perfect. So the working direction of the remote is a wrong way around and to sort that out, all you need to do is hold on to the stop button for five seconds. Hear the motor go, click down. And there you go, direction should be changed. So if I now press the up button, there you go, direction sorted. Press the down. Excellent, working correctly now. The blind motor can be used just with the remote if you wanted to, you don't have to install the app. There are instructions on doing this. Obviously, if you did go with that option, you are limited with what you can do with it. Obviously, you're only controlling everything via the remote. Now, by using the app, obviously, you've got additional functionality and smart functionality to go along with it. So I'll be using it mostly via the app. But in summary, if you wanted to go with this, there's instructions on this, and it's as simple as just literally pressing the pin at the back, getting it into position, and then pressing the pin again, and it will save the position for you. So what that will mean, if I pressed it once, if you set a limit on there, it will just go down to the position and stop. If you had an additional limit on there, it will go to that following limit and so on. And you can do this up to six different limits. 
So it's good to know it can work standalone. Let me show you around the functionality you have with the app. Now with the device added in, this is what you see and there's some shortcut options on here as well. Coming in here, you can see mode and you've got morning mode and night mode. And I've been told this works in conjunction with a light sensor, but with a blind motor by itself, it does nothing. Next one along, you've got motor direction, quick way of flipping that around. Then you've got motor working mode. Continuous is when you pick a direction and it will continually keep moving. Intermittently is when you press the direction, it will just go down in one stage. I'll show that in a second. And then finally, you've got add remote, and this allows you to add a remote. Now, you don't really need all this there. I guess they've put it in just for the sake of it. Going back, you've got a power button here, pressing that don't see any sort of action happening from there, just a subtle movement from the blind, doesn't do anything more than that. Going into it, coming into settings, standard sort of functionality you have on all the other devices. So in summary, you can rename the device, change what room it's in, confirms what third party controls it's compatible with. You can group devices together and share with other people, together with removing it as well. Back from here and looking here, you can see morning mode and dropping that down. As I mentioned before, this option does nothing. Back from here. Now with the picture of the window you have here, you've got a drag down option. So this in theory should let you pull it down to a certain point, release, and take it down to that level. So if I had it on 80%, for instance, you see it's flipped over to 100%. So it doesn't do partial amounts on here. So if I dragged it down again, and again, it's zero or 100. Now, not a major thing, it'd be nice if you could do this, but if I press down, press pause, you can pause it at any stage. So it is possible to go partial, but just not via dragging it on the side. Now, if you did press up or down, it will just reach the limit and then stop automatically because we've set the limits on here. Going over to more, motor direction you've seen, motor working mode. So if I move over to intermittently, confirm that, go back and press the button. Just goes down. A small step. Let me hold on to it. Nothing happens with that. It's just single presses it goes down with. So not really that usable. Maybe it's a use case for some people, but I'm going to flip back to continuous. Add remoter. You've seen that one already. Schedule. So this allows you to set a schedule for this so you can have a timer for it automatically opening and closing. Add to that, set any time you want, and then your repeat action is what days you want it to happen. You can set a note with this. You can get a notification too when it happens. And control wise, you've only got two options here, open and close. So there's no option to open it partially on this as well. So for instance, say midday, you wanted it to close 50% not possible via this. Back from here, back again, back again, and set limit, which you've already seen. So that's all the functionality you get in this. So next, if we drop this down, turn off my Wi-Fi, just to show, if I press the arrow, there you go, works remotely. So you could be away from home and control your blinds. Now coming back from there, going into smart, if I went to tap to run, created a new item, and we select the device, and these are the options you have available on here. So for example, open, stop, close, continue. So that's just performing those actions. Curtain position setting. So this is interesting. So you could set an automation that you press a button and it will close 50%. So let me do that now, save to that. I'll show the other items as well. So mode, you've got morning mode, night mode, motor direction, you can change from here, border, so they have to do with the limits, motor working mode, you can change that here and you can get it to add a remote. Okay, so if we do next to this, just save it. And now if I press this, Okay, so that's interesting to see. So even when you set the positioning through the smart functionality, it doesn't work. One of the cool features about these smart blinds is that you can get it working in conjunction with other products. So I've got my no neutral Zigbee based light switch over here. This button controls the lights in the room and I can program the other one to do any other action I want. So I've programmed this one to control the blinds. Now coming over to the app, you can see in smart automation, I've got two automation rules here and the closed studio blind, it's as simple as just doing this. When it's on, the curtain position setting is zero and on the other one, when it's off, curtain position setting is 100%. So now if I press the button, 
There you go. How cool is that? Controlling your blinds via the light switch. So much more of a cleaner setup. You can see there's nothing on the wall as well. Obviously I've got to fill in those holes, but not a big deal to do, but it's just cleaned up things. I didn't really like the chain hanging off the wall anyway. So nice to be able to do that. Let's press it again, just to show the other side. And there you go, closes off. Really cool bit of functionality. And again, if you had an issue with this, and your smart tech was down, obviously you couldn't get cloud connectivity, you can just use the remote to open or close it. So there is a backup there, which is the main thing. Voice control is available on both the Amazon and Google products. Now, let's look at the Google side of things first. So going into the home app, the service you're after is Smart Life, which I've got there. And if I scroll down, and there we have it, Studio Blind, going in there, there's no functionality available. So the only thing you can do is really voice control. So if I now say, open Studio Blind. Sure, opening the Studio Blind. Close Studio Blind. Sure, closing the Studio Blind. There we have it, works well. Let me show on the Amazon side of things, similar thing with this as well. You add in the skill called Smart Life, devices here, Studio Blind, same thing again, you've got no functionality in there. By default, it works slightly differently. So if I say, turn on Studio Blind. Okay. Turn off Studio Blind. Okay doesn't work with the open and close options, but it does work with the on and off options. The height of the blind, open or close, is 195 centimeters. So the speed of opening and closing will be the same on this. So let's time how long it takes. There you go, about 30 seconds. Let's measure the sound levels coming from the motor. So in the 50s, I'd say about 54 decibels. If you're wondering if the device can be added via the Amazon Zigbee Hub, which I have over here, I have tried adding it in and it appears as a plug for some reason, which is really strange. You can see it here and it's saying there's a problem, server's unresponsive, but no real functionality behind it. If I go into settings, that's what you see there. And if you're wondering if you can add a device in on the Philips Hue bridge, you can't. I've tried it and it doesn't pick anything up. Strangely enough, the light does stop flashing, but there's no item there. So in summary, really impressed with this smart blind from Zemi Smart. Functionality is great on here, easy to set up and configure. You've got the backup of the remote control on this as well. So you don't have to use it with the app. You could use it just with the remote by itself, but it's nice to have the smart functionality so you can remotely control it, set timers on there, have it work in conjunction with other tech. It's an excellent functionality from this. A lot of positives on this, as I've mentioned. Negatives wise, I was a bit disappointed that it didn't have the ability to pull down the blind in the app and have it going to a certain percentage, but you can open it up and hit the pause button. So you're not limited in any way with this. So there you go, I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Hang around for the end cars, there'll be more smart tech videos. Drop me a like as it really does help the channel out. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.